you're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh, yeah. On this episode of Dear Bros, Lady Feels Like Her Marriage Is In A Funk Due To COVID. Uh-oh. Also, Grandma Versus Mom. Stay tuned. You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bro Down Podcast. I'm Andy Smith. And I'm Tim Fulton. And this is Dear Bros. Dear Bros. Okay, so we rip some advice columns and we give our very unprofessional advice. First up. <laughs> it's me. We're going to be talking about Grandma versus Mama on this episode. Oh, so the actual title shit. is called Grandma Raising Young Girls Grows Tired of Mom's Antics. Y'all ready for this one? <laughs> it's actually relatively short. Here we go. Dear Abby, I am raising my two granddaughters and trying to allow their mother, my daughter, to visit with them. The problem is, the entire time she's with us, she stays on her phone or Snapchat. Last weekend, I drove to the place where she resides, and the whole time we were there, she ignored the girls. I have a ton of family and friends who say I'm wrong for allowing her to even see the girls, period. I don't want to be the bad guy when they grow up. Help, Abby, for the good in Ohio. Okay. There's a lot to unpack in a relatively short time. So so let's go over this real quick so that we have all the facts. She is... Uh, Raising her two granddaughters. Correct. And her daughter, who is their mother, uh, is allowing her to visit her daughters. Yes. So she's allowing her, which means she probably has custody of them. That sounds accurate. Okay. And that mean, that also sounds like she has full control of the situation. Not yeah. like judge ordered or anything. It's, it's up to her. Yeah. Uh, the problem is the entire time she's with us, she stays on her phone or on Snapchat. Last week, I drove the place where she resides. The whole time we ignore it. Yeah. Um, this isn't good. No, it's not good. I will say that. I don't know. How, I don't know how to phrase this. As long, my personal opinion. You can correct me if you think that I'm out of bounds here. If you are giving them a safe and loving and caring home and like a nurturing environment where you give them attention, continue to allow them to see her mother, to see, for them to see the mother, maybe bring it up with her. Hey, pay attention to your kids. But you can't I, – I think she should keep going in the direction that she's going. Which is? Allow the mother to see them once a week, once every other week, whatever it is. And let I, – I know this sounds almost kind of mean – let them realize on their own what's happening. Because if you take the mother away from them 100%, you're saving them once every two weeks from a negative experience, but they're always going to have that what if in their head. But if she keeps in this trajectory, it gets rid of the question. This is far beyond my ability to give advice on. <laughs> but... If I had to give advice, it is an advice show. Um, I don't know because monkey see, monkey do, and that's true. Too. The problem with that is that you can tell kids a thousand things; they're gonna imitate what they see. True. Okay, just like how uh, kids that grow up in abusive households, alcoholic households, you can tell the kid a thousand times, you know, you shouldn't stay with somebody if they're abusive. But if you do it, that's what they remember, and yeah. that's what they model their behavior off of. And that's why the cycle repeats itself in a lot of times because they're saying they're doing what they the environment they were raised in. That's for true. For whatever fucking reason. That's true. Um so it sounds like the you know, the whole let's talk to the daughter, the mother thing is it sounds like the grandmother has custody for a reason. Yeah. I don't think a talking to is gonna help. If you're going to see your kids and you don't even want to spend time and your phone is more important than your kids that you're good, that you're seeing once a week, there's not what are you going to say to them? Right? What are you going to say to them? Right? You can't say anything to them because they should know that. They should know it. That's and, fair. That's and I fair. don't know where the aha moment is, but um 
it sounds like common sense, responsibility, whatever, wave bye-bye to this lady a long time ago, meaning the daughter. Um, I, kudos to the grandmother for taking on the responsibility. Yeah. And because she has the responsibility of doing it, I mean, I don't know where it went wrong with her daughter, but it sounds like she has a head on her shoulders because she doesn't want to expose her grandchildren to something negative, which is why she's asking for advice. Um, I don't know how... Does it say how old they are? It doesn't, but she does at one point say she ignores the girls, which to me makes them sound young, either yeah. preteen or younger. Well, they got to be. I could be wrong. They got to be younger than eighteen because they're. She's caring for them. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah I think that it's going to be hard road no matter what, right? Because if you don't let them see the mother, if she has full custody, we're under the assumption. Then, once they get older. You know, they might be wondering why. They're probably going to have a lot of suppressed or repressed feelings about it and, and whatnot. But again, the behavior that they're learning because they know that this is their mom. I'm sure they call her mom. If they grow up, real, you know, knowing that their mom would rather look at her fucking phone than spend time with her kids. Yeah. Like to show like, hey, I don't see you ever. And then also when I'm here, you don't even have my attention. Yeah. That's going to. That's going to set, like, the pecking order of importance for, like, loved ones in their head. See, I disagree with that solely because the grandmother is the sole custodian for these kids. Yes. So I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that the grandmother is going to be um, primarily the example setter. And the mother is going to end up being the exception. It's you know, it's like it's like seeing, like, a weird uncle on holiday and you're just like it is but there there is also there's always the thing because this is an unusual situation it is right unfortunately a lot of people probably do grow up in this situation but it's not the most common situation yeah yeah so when they're going to school and they get older they're going to start to realize this is not a common situation yeah right and they're going to then choose who they put as the matriarch in their head and we can only hope that it it's the grandmother from what we know. But it might not be. Because the grandmother is going to be the one that's telling them she's the rule maker. She's the one that's doing all this. See, And it's not normal to have the grandmother be in that role. See, I think it'll be a bigger problem if grandma says mom can't see you. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, think I, that I, that's the answer. Yeah. I don't think that – I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that I think that it's going to be a hurdle either way because, you know – it's almost like you're you're being raised by uh, one of your parents' significant other. Yeah, you're never is it, unless you were raised from a very very young age. Like you're a lot of times there is that tension of like you're not my real parent, and that gets brought up with anger. So I don't know. This is a tough one, man. I'm not <laughs> okay. I'm not. We're, yeah, ready we're not there for this one. Guys. So. Uh, yeah, gun to my head, talk to your daughter, try to straighten her out. Um, make sure the kids know that, you, that you're that you there for them. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of what mommy does, you are going to be there. That's I agree with that wholeheartedly. Be, uh, control it, what you can control. It sucks that it's up to you because it shouldn't be your responsibility. But no. now that you are in this position, for whatever lack the mother gives, you have to make up for it. It's not even so much making up for it as much as they, they need to know that there's somebody there that's stability. Yeah, yeah. Somebody there that's going to be there, not pay attention, or pay attention and all that shit. Because what they're getting from their mom is this whimsy come as you are, come as you go kind of thing, who doesn't really give a shit, doesn't pay attention. So they need something that it doesn't doesn't falter kind of thing, yeah. which sucks yeah. for the grandma in a lot of ways. But anyway, your thoughts? Those were my thoughts. Okay. I, I, I agree. Give a, a talk to the mother. I mean, a lot changes depending on the circumstances of you this because we don't have one. I know. Because we don't have a ton of detail here, but... I say t attempt to talk to the mother and keep on keeping on with what you're doing. You're going to be the bad guy to the kids or and or the mother if you don't let her see them. 
So as long as they're safe within these visits, like physically safe within these visits, l maybe limit them, but keep on trucking on. Yeah. And, and give them give them the primary example that they'll they'll need. Yeah. I'd be interested to see why the grandmother has full custody. Yeah, there could be a, a myriad of reasons. Yeah. So let's see what the actual professional says. Dear for the good. Either your daughter doesn't know how to relate to her children, which is why she stays on her cell phone when you bring them to her, or she's not interested in creating a bond since she has offloaded them to you. Talk with your daughter. Tell her that if she isn't prepared to actually spend time with her children, you will stop bringing them and then follow through. Children aren't stupid. They know when someone is interested in them and they and they are being ignored. In the end, you won't be the bad guy in their eyes. Oh, so she's bringing the children to them. What? She the grandmother is driving the children to her daughters. She said in the one example. She said she allows them visits. She allows her to see the children and she said last time I went to them. Oh, I don't know okay. if it's exclusively she goes to okay, them. Okay. Okay. Um I don't know if I wholeheartedly agree with that advice. I see where, I see where Abby's coming from and maybe it's not the worst advice in the world, but Which part? Where she says stop bringing them. Give her an ultimatum. Ultimatums are dangerous. I, honestly, if you, as some, like, here's the, here's the, the situation though, is that somewhere in the court system, they deem that the mother was unfit to be the sole protector of those children. I, I you agree. now take the responsibility for that. I agree. If you are the responsible, responsible party for those kids, and you don't think that that is the best thing for those kids, it is your responsibility to not expose them to that. I, I agree to a certain extent i still see a little bit of danger in not letting them see her altogether i don't think it's as clean cut to the children in the end if she stops seeing them now that the grandmother won't end up being the quote unquote bad guy but all she has to do is stop bringing them over yeah but she can but, allow say, hey you want to see your kids you got to come to me what if she still stays on the phone then the, i mean she's not going to stay on the phone if that's what that if that's the case like she's like i feel like what it is now is that the grandmother is probably pressuring her to continue to see her children and she's yeah. doing it out of like a all right ma kind yeah. of an attitude yeah possibly whereas if if she like gives her an out and says like listen you don't want to spend time with your kids don't spend time with your kids i think from the attitude we're getting from the mother she's either going to a look at that like oh thank god or she's going to smarten up and maybe some maybe realizing that she can't see her kids anymore will smarten her up, or maybe she'll just not give a shit. Yeah, I don't know, but it sounds toxic. I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> all right, Andy, what all do you right, got? All right, so help Stella get her groove back. Yeah, you almost used all capital letters. You were so almost. Close. Um, so grind of pandemic taking a toll on couples' ability to connect. Okay. Okay. So, dear Abby, my husband and I have experienced a serious disconnect since the COVID-19 outbreak. I've had very little interest in him and zero desire when it comes to sex. Zero is with a italics. So, you know it's serious. We have two small children at home, so mommy and daddy time is non now non-existent. We have left our home and we haven't left our home in 5 months and I'm beyond frustrated. I know he wants to keep us safe, but when I see pictures online and hear about my friends and family still going out, living their lives, it makes me depressed, anxious, and to be honest, grumpy. He says he loves me, but he hasn't he has started to resemble a Neanderthal. He doesn't shower regularly and doesn't shave for weeks on end. I can't remember the last time I put makeup on or jewelry or perfume on or even a cute outfit. Frumpy isn't a word I would use to describe myself, but it's how I feel and how I'm looking these days. He says my lack of desire is confusing, so now I feel attacked and inadequate like I'm letting him down. I love him, I do, but right now, I'm just not feeling it. I miss the days when I felt special, loved, admired, and appreciated. Now, it's nothing more than laundry, cleaning, picking up messes, homeschooling, and asking what they want to eat next. Did I mention dishes? It's time, Abby. I need to get my groove back. Any suggestions? Can I, can I hit this one? Yeah. All right. So first off, I wholly, whole, whole, whole heartily get where she's coming from. Yeah. She's by far not the only person who is feeling this sense of ah, when it comes to the goddamn pandemic. Yeah. And it's getting to a lot of people. It's getting to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. 
this situation in particular, and I've said this not just because of pandemic relationships, but in all relationships, little things go a long way. If you're feeling frumpy and not like connecting well, a little action can steamroll into a big action. Mm -hmm. Create a date night. Just because you and your husband have a date night doesn't mean you need to go out to a fancy restaurant and have drinks and like do the whole five shebang. Make the dining room table, light some candles, have a fancy dinner after you put the kids to bed, and then maybe just play music and slow dance to it and create create a semblance for yourself. Sounds pretty gay. It does sound pretty gay. <laughs> you know what? I would love that too. I'm not getting any of that, but I'm going to light a candle for myself. When I get home. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Once you start doing little gestures like these, it rubs off on people. So hopefully the husband will be like, oh, I'm getting a hit. And maybe he'll start re recuper recuperating reciprocating in his own little tidbit ways that will add on to each other. And the groove doesn't have to be these elaborate, like grand gesture things, but make time for yourself. Like, yeah. Do, do things that will make you feel happy. If he's not showering, take him into the shower and have shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, dis I don't disagree, but I have to say, I feel for this lady She's clearly going through it, right? Yeah. I think that these scenarios are a perfect example of that people, regardless of how well you, there can be too much time spent together. There could be. I agree. You put I agree two best too. friends in a room, eventually there's going to be a fight. It's, it's inevitable. That's what happens when you're stuck in a room with somebody. It just happens. Yeah. Now, I, if you read this again, you can see a little bit of the frustration coming out and it's, it's sporadic frustration. Okay. Because if you look, she starts giving her husband shit for not showering, resembling a Neanderthal and not shaving for weeks on end. Fair enough. Get your shit together, dude. Just because you don't have to get up and go to work. Doesn't mean to turn into a fat slob. Now, if you don't want to fucking shave, grow the beard out. Should probably be fucking showering though. Yeah, I okay. Agree. <laughs> you should probably be showering. All right, you dirty fuck. <laughs> Gotta give it to your wife on that one. All right. Yeah. Point wife. Yeah. Work out at the house or something if you're, you know, whatever the fuck. But that's unacceptable. Yeah. But then in the next sentence, she says, "I don't know when the last time I put makeup or perfume or a cute dress on." It's like that's the same thing. Yeah. That's the that's the it, that's the same thing. It is the same thing. So I get the frustration. And this is how you know someone's really frustrated is when they contradict, like, the action that they're mad at in the next sentence and they don't see it. Yeah, okay. So I get it. Like, she's clearly very frustrated because she then says that he says his her lack of desire is confusing. So now she feels attacked and inadequate. But she just said that she doesn't want to fuck her husband at all. Zero. But he's a prick for not understanding why. But, like, it seems like both of these people are doing the same thing. And they're both mad at each other for doing the same thing. And nobody has the balls to just fucking pull their own weight. Right? It's like, oh, you don't fuck because I don't shower. Well, you don't fuck you because, you know, I don't put on makeup. It's like. Well, how about I take a shower? How about you put on makeup or whatever? Like, nobody just wants and, to do that. And then we'll have sex. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. Like, it seems like like they're both doing shit that is clearly putting the other person off. Yeah. That if it wasn't for COVID would not have stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But it seems like nobody has the leadership ability to just take the reins and be like, I'm going to turn this ship around. I'm that... going to do this. It's like, not going to put on makeup. I'm not showering. I don't know if it's that, but I do see where you're going. The whole leadership thing, I agree. No one, no one's taking the like the vibe in the room, so to speak, yeah. has become toxic. Toxic, yeah. And that's what you need to air out. Open up a goddamn window. Yeah. Air that shit out. Yeah. Put him outside till he showers. Holds him down. But yeah, this is this is a and it's totally normal because you got people stuck inside that in. It's not like stuck inside where like oh you can go out. You can't even really go out. No, you to, can't go to where you want to go. So all these things are just compounding. 
Like, yeah. this is a totally normal. Like, I think most people would be going through this given the situation. But sometimes people have a hard time stepping back and just being like, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd do things, too, that I could probably not do and just change it or whatever. But, again, it sounds like everyone is just stuck in their, like, pajamas and All nobody day. wants to put Every on the day. work pants. Yeah. It does. It gets old fast. I understand her frustration. Yeah. So I. What's your advice? Shower? My, honestly, my advice, I get it. I get it. But I'm, I'm going to go no kids gloves. The gloves are coming off. No hand wraps. You're fucking adults. Okay? You're adults. If you're fucking bored, you're an adult. You know who get bored? Kids get bored sometimes. Because they can't fucking do things on their own. You're an adult. Figure it the fuck out. If you don't, if you can't entertain yourself by yourself, well, then guess what? You don't have a fucking imagination or you are lazy or you're, I don't know, but figure it the fuck out. Expand your horizon. Well, I don't want to do that. That's boring. Well, maybe you're fucking boring. Okay. We all know those people that can fucking have fun no matter what they're doing. And then we all know those people that are miserable no matter what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Try to be more like the happy guy. I feel like you're perpetuating other scenarios onto this. No, she, they no. never said she was bored. No, but this is no, no. She did. It, it's it comes from all, like they're stuck in their house. They're bored. Yeah, dude, they're stuck in their house. They they're going she, out, living their lives, and it's making her depressed. Yeah, she, I know. She, like she's in this with her family. Yeah, there's things that you can do. It's not like this family alone is in that situation. Yes, like everybody's in the situation like it sounds like the, the guy might be a little bit too much on the whole like let's be safe from covid thing because it sounds like she wants to go out yeah it does. but at the same time dude like this is the boat you're in you can either be fucking sad or you guys can make it work like tell your dirty ass husband to take a fucking shower you should be able to just tell him that if he's a cool guy he won't he'll get it he'll fucking laugh but yeah i don't know I think you went a little too mean there. I say do romantic gestures and let them steamroll into a good, healthy She doesn't want to fuck her husband, dude. <laughs> All right? That's she, where you have to start with she somewhere. She said zero desire. So start with somewhere. Lighting some candles. Why? Cover up a stink? <laughs> I think you should light your candles. I think you should get the fuck over it. You stupid piece of yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. People complain too much. Dude, we're 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 listening. <laughs> I'm just it's, trying to piss you off it's now. It's literally advice columns. I'm just it's trying to piss you off. It's literally people saying, "Please, I need help. What would you do?" Stupid bitch. <laughs> but sometimes people need fucking tough advice. Sometimes they don't. You're too mean. No, sometimes I think you're people too mean need tough one. advice. I agree, but I think you're too mean on this one. What what does App say? I don't know. Uh, it's time to clear the air. Tell your husband what you've told me, starting with the fact that you feel depressed, anxious, and trapped. Out of all sorts, he is now resembles a Neanderthal. It may take, it may take him, wait, it may make him feel less confused. If you have been doing all the chores alone, it's important that he pitch in. That's true. You both may need to, yeah, if he's not helping out with around the house, then fucking, yeah. that's another thing. Like, yeah, we you gotta we pull your own weight, dude. We, we didn't even touch on that, but he does have to pull his own weight. Yeah, like, Fucking, that's on him, 100%. You both may need to get out of your cage once in a while, dress up, and go out for an outdoor meal. Lunch with a friend. Take your kids to the park. Your husband should go do the same. However, if he can't bring himself to do that, he needs to understand that depression and isolation may be a threat to your marriage. Ooh. She got heavy. Yeah, but it sounds like they don't want to go out anywhere, right? Yeah. That's what I was... See, and I'm was... working under the assumption that they don't, they're not allowed to go anywhere. That that was my assumption too, right? That they're that they don't want to or are not allowed to, and that's why I'm saying that there are things you can do inside. I know it seems restrictive because not everyone has a gigantic house or anything like that. So yeah. like maybe you're stuck in the same four rooms, but you can dress up a room, dress yourself up, do something, do something that's a little bit different. A little different goes a long way. Yeah, dude, I get I get a little fucking crazy with shit. I get a little over the top, but it, but at the end of the day, in all seriousness. Uh, everybody's going through this. Yeah. Like everybody is going through the cabin fever stage. Yeah. Yeah. And 
sometimes uh, there's nothing that you, there's no options. Like you don't have any other options. The only option that you have is to change the way that you're seeing things, right? Your only option is to change your outlook on your situation. And right now their outlook on the situation, like if, if you are stuck in this spot, and literally, like, going out isn't an option. Having a babysitter isn't an option. Right? Yeah. Like, you have to change your outlook on this situation as, as like, all right, maybe it's not that bad. Let's look at what we do have. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously talk to your husband. Tell him to fucking shower. He better be fucking doing shit around the house. But at the same time, like, you could be in a better spot if, if you just stop looking at the negative aspects. It's hard now, though, because of the situation that everybody's in. But... You know, if everyone would just get on the same page and agree to try to look at things in a better light, it might be it might have a better like outcome or a vibe in the house. Because right now it seems like gunslingers passing each other in the hall. <laughs> a little bit. A yeah. Little bit, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that advice? I mean, I think she missed the mark only in that she says go out, which I don't think is an option. I think everything else was correct. But I don't think the going out part is an option. Other than that, I agree with you. The outlook can has to be the thing that changes. I still go back to my whole do little changes inside the house thing. I think that's where I disagree a little bit where you do ha- have an option. Things – depression stems – Yeah, no, I, from, I 100% agree with what you said yeah, before. Yeah, depression stems from when you feel like you have no options. But people always have an option. You have an option to do things. Mm-hmm. You have the option to change. I feel like that guy – what's his name? Tony uh, – Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. <laughs> Listen to some Tony Robbins tapes. No, seriously. All right, if you don't have the ability to go anywhere, go for a drive. Just go – put on your favorite song – Get in the car with your husband, go for a drive, and hold his hand for 20 minutes. Make a giant loop and come back. You know how much that clears the air for some people? L- literally and not literally sometimes? Yeah. Dude, there are little things you can do that can help. I'm not saying like the world's going to be perfect if you light a fucking candle. I'm not saying everything is going to be resolved if you slow dance in your living room. It, but it helps You know what? do the do, little things. Do you think that it might not even be like – it might not even be 100% the other person. It might just be that they haven't had their own de- like de-escalation time from either. Go- like, everyone has their own de-escalation time, right? Yeah. Their drive to work. Their whatever. Now that people aren't doing that, the dam can only get so full. Yeah. That's until it too. spills over. It might not even be that there's a, a rift between them. Like, if they still had their little outlet, like, she might not give a shit that he doesn't, doesn't shower. shower and he might not care that she doesn't put on makeup i mean he sounds like he doesn't yeah not for nothing i was gonna say like if you don't like the way your girl looks without makeup like you're kind of a douche yeah right like you're kind of you're pretty much fucking asshole but the thing is is uh I, it, like wouldn't that be a possibility that's more it could be like that maybe they're just they don't have their own personal thing and then now that's like projecting on each yeah. other it's like misplaced frustration yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's def it's definitely at least a part of it yeah i agree yeah i agree i don't know i don't know i don't know but you can't just like snap out of like not wanting to bang your significant other that's like a feeling yeah i know yeah so what do you do with that i don't know what you do with that you gotta start somewhere is where you yeah do that. um yeah all right, guys. Well, this has been stupid Ugh. advice from a bunch of bros. You can Take go to BroDownPro.com and ask us questions yourself. We have a portal there where you can enter in a question for the Dear Bro segment if you so choose. If you do so, it all remains anonymous. You can optionally put in your email address so we can let you know when the show will air with your question. If not, then fuck you. Uh, just leave a comment in the comments down below let us know what you think of these questions what is your advice to these people don't forget to like and subscribe hit that little bell notification so you can make sure you get all of our videos yes there's a little bell i swear to god it's there you won't get all of our videos unless you press it other than that this has been tim fulton good night america you're listening to bro down podcast all fucking day